The next material that we're going to be starting to get into here are applications of the derivative. So one of the first applications we're going to talk about is extrema. This video is going to cover two different types of extrema, absolute extrema and also local extrema. Absolute extrema is talking about the absolute highest or lowest y value on an interval. So we're going to let c represent a number that is in the interval. So we're going to say that the y value at c is going to be considered the absolute minimum of f on that interval if the y value at c is less than or equal to any of the other y values on that interval. Okay, so if that occurs there, that means that whatever that y value is, that's going to be the absolute minimum uh, on the interval. f of c uh, is an absolute max, okay, and then if that y value is greater than or equal to any of the other y values, then whatever that y value is, that's considered the absolute maximum on the interval. Now, there are situations where you may not always have an absolute max or a min, so I have three different graphs that illustrate some different situations. Let's look at the first one. The first one we're going to look at the closed interval between negative 1 and 2. If everything is closed and the line is solid, there's no open circles there, that means that the highest point you see there, that's going to be the absolute max, so the max will occur at 2 comma 5. The min's going to occur down here at 0, 1. So in this case, we do have an absolute max and an absolute min. Let's look at the next one. The next one is an open interval. So we're open on the endpoints between negative 1 and 2. Now, the lowest point on here does exist. That's, a, that's a, a solid line there. So that's why we do have a minimum. Minimum is going to be 0, 1. However, notice that we don't have an absolute max, and that's because there's an open circle there, and so we can get infinitely close to, but we can't actually reach the absolute highest point on the graph itself. So that's why if you have an open circle there, we got to say that there's no absolute max for this particular graph. Now this one, the endpoints are included, except we have an open circle at zero. So basically negative one to zero and zero to two, that's the interval that we're going to be on. So the max we definitely have because it's the highest point in the graph, it goes to two comma five. However, there is no absolute min because that's an open circle and again we can't get down to the actual lowest point that's there, so that's why we say that there is no absolute min in this case. So now that we've covered the absolute extrema, let's now take a look at local extrema. Local, or it's also referred to as relative extrema of a function. Instead of putting up a definition for you, I think it's easier to look at the definition graphically. And so I'm putting the local maxes and the absolute max and mins all in the same graph so you can see the difference between the two. So I've got these different points that are labeled down here, and let's take a look at each one. The first one at A, that's an absolute min, and the reason why is because it's the lowest point on the entire interval. There's no other y value that's lower than that point right there, so that's considered the absolute lowest or absolute minimum of the entire graph on that interval. Now we have a local max here, but let's look at the difference between local max and absolute max. Absolute max would be the highest point on the entire interval. There's no other y value that's higher between A and B. So at D here, that's an absolute max. Nothing's higher than that one. But this one here at C would only be considered a local max because it's not the highest y value on the entire graph. However, it is the highest in this localized area. So it's localized is where the word local comes from or also it's relative to the entire graph. That's where that name comes from as well. So locally, this is the highest in that part of the graph. Also, this one right here, this is considered a local min, but it's not an absolute min because the y value here doesn't go down as low as the other one does. So locally, this is the lowest y value. And also, this is also considered a local min because this point, again, is lower than anything else in the area, but it's not as low as the absolute min. So hopefully this helps to explain the difference between local max and mins and absolute max and mins.